How's it going everyone? Welcome back to the channel. While the Lakers recently have gotten back Anthony Davis, after being out for more than two months, they have actually taken a step backward instead of forward, like many thought they would have. They seemingly were playing better before he returned, and it has left many wondering, what is going on with the Lakers right now? While there is not one definitive answer to that question, there are multiple areas that we can look at that will help give more of a clear picture on why they are currently struggling. And to begin, the obvious one here is chemistry. Not only was Anthony Davis out for more than two months, but he has now returned to a much different team than when he left. Not only did they add two new players to their rotation in Andre Drummond and Ben McLemore, but their rotation itself is now completely different. When AD was last on the court, their rotation included Marcus Gasol, Wesley Matthews, and did not give as many minutes to Taylor Horton Tucker. So not only is Anthony Davis having to readjust to being back on the court and finding his own rhythm, but he is having to get comfortable with practically a completely new rotation too. And when you add back in a player, as important as Anthony Davis, back to a team that is now completely different compared to when he last played, there is going to be chemistry issues. You cannot integrate a player like Anthony Davis back into a rotation and immediately expect him to take on a big role again without expecting the chemistry to be a bit off right away. Their chemistry on both ends of the floor has been a glaring issue ever since Anthony Davis has returned. As a team, it's clear that they have gotten very used to playing without him. On offense, almost everyone on their team almost looks a bit uncomfortable and not looking like they even know what to do when they run their offense through Anthony Davis in the high post. It's almost like they have forgotten how to play with him, which is not all that surprising when you consider that he has not even played with some of the players who are now on the floor with him. Instead of improving their offense, it has often left it looking even worse. Will that be the case in a couple of games from now? I really doubt it, but they currently do have a lot of work to do. They found out very quickly that they cannot simply run their entire offense through Anthony Davis when he is on the floor, especially with him struggling to find a rhythm. They need to find a balance between what was working for them before on offense, which was running a lot of pick and roll through Dennis Schroeder, and then slowly reintegrating their offense through Anthony Davis more as he gets more comfortable on the floor again. And their need to do that is very apparent in my opinion. The only time their offense looked relatively good while playing Washington was when they ran a lot of pick and roll through Schroeder with either AD or Drummond as the roller. AD draws a lot of attention on a pick and roll due to his ability to either be a roller and a lob threat or to be a pick and pop and shoot from the three point line. And with how quick Shooter is, it does not give the defense a lot of time to react to whatever AD does between rolling or popping out for a three point shot. If they really want to make him a priority in their offense practically every time down the floor, that is the correct way to do it. Not by giving him the ball in the high post every time and expecting him to make a play from there. While we all know that AD loves to play out of the high post and either shoot from the mid-range or drive and kick to an open three-point shooter, it simply does not work as well without LeBron on the court with him. LeBron and AD will almost always play on the opposite side of the court when the other has the ball in the high post. This draws the attention of the defense away from whichever one has the ball in the high post and gives them a lot more room to operate. But with LeBron currently out yet, that has been the clear reason for why running the offense through AD in the high post is not working. He draws a double team nearly every time, and he has not been able to find a rhythm because of it. And even though he has been drawing double teams, they have not been able to be quick enough to take advantage of the double teams that he does draw, either because they often hesitate to shoot, or they drive into a crowded paint and take a bad shot. Again, that can all be attributed to not being used to having Anthony Davis on the floor with them, and especially not used to having the offense run through him again either. And even though Anthony Davis has struggled to find a rhythm himself, the fault is not entirely on him. Like I mentioned before, many of their other players are not currently taking advantage of the attention that AD draws on the floor. Two players in particular that have really looked uncomfortable on the floor ever since AD has returned have been Taylor Horton Tucker and Markeith Morris. They both went from averaging over 10 points per game while AD and LeBron were out to now averaging only 5 and 3 points per game each while shooting very poorly from the 3 point line. In fact, they have shot a combined 0 for 24 from the 3 point line in their past 4 games combined. While Talon is not expected to be a reliable 3-point shooter for them like Markeith is, neither have been reliable in practically any area for them during the past 4 games. The inefficient 3-point shooting is a huge problem for two players who each play about 20 minutes per game, but the way they've struggled ever since AD has returned is a clear example of how many of their players have been uncomfortable in their new role with AD now back on the court. 
Some players like Ben McLemore have flourished with the increased room that AD has given them on the three-point line, but overall, their team has really struggled to adapt with him now back on the floor. Although it may not look like it if you only look at his numbers, Andre Drummond has really struggled to get comfortable while playing with AD too. He's been a beneficiary of getting more offensive rebounds from the attention that AD draws on the floor, but overall, he has looked very uncomfortable in his new role. He oftentimes does not really know where to go when AD has the ball in the high post and then looks even more confused when it comes to their defensive rotations now too. The teams that they have played have targeted AD and Drummond on pick and rolls by switching them onto perimeter players and while they are capable of individually doing that, they are not making the correct rotations as a team after it happens. They are not communicating effectively on where to go or when to switch back either. It has often left them looking at each other, wondering whose fault it is on a particular defensive rotation. Again, that all comes with chemistry, and right now they simply do not have it. It should not be a big surprise to anyone that is watching them play that they are not making great defensive rotations right now, especially when playing against the Mavericks and Washington Wizards, whom are two of the hottest offensive teams in the entire NBA right now. So, unfortunately what they are left with is a chemistry issue with not a lot of time to figure out. It is not really a problem with the makeup of their team or something that they can't ever figure out. It really is just a chemistry problem that is being overblown because there is not a lot of time left in the regular season. Will they figure it out? In my opinion, yes they will. But will it be hard for them to maintain their current playoff spot because of that chemistry issue? Yes, it also will. The Lakers do have a couple of very winnable games approaching with the Kings and the Raptors, so they need to use those two games to not only maintain their current playoff seed, but to build more chemistry and become a better team internally. I personally have no doubt that they will figure it out come playoff time, but it may cause them to come dangerously close to losing their current playoff seed, and we all know that nobody wants to end up in the 7th seed or below in the Western Conference. In conclusion, it can be very hard to not worry about them as a Laker fan, but the problems they are dealing with are only temporary. They are very fixable problems that can be solved by playing together more and by building more team chemistry. As Anthony Davis begins to find his rhythm again and they get more comfortable with him back on the floor, they will undoubtedly improve. But what do you guys think? What do you personally believe is holding them back as a team right now? Let me know by commenting down below and we can talk about it there. That will do it for this video though. Thank you to everyone who took the time to watch until the end of the video. I really hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, please remember to drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and turn on notifications to get notified right away when I drop a new video. But as always, thank you for watching, and have a great day.